In this video, I'll show you how to quickly set up your Zoom in Blackboard. So I'm in one of my Blackboard courses. It happens to be an old course that I'm using for demonstration purposes. One of the things you'll notice down at the bottom of your course menu is Zoom meeting. This is where you can create and schedule your meeting. So go ahead and click on that. And now I need to schedule a new meeting so my students can access the link and get into the Zoom session. So I'll click on schedule a new meeting. I can double check the topic. I can shorten that a little bit if I want. And then I can say when the meeting will happen. But what I want to do here is since it's going to be throughout the semester, I would make it a recurring meeting. And then I can specify when this meeting will occur, uh, weekly or monthly. But what you can do is use this no fixed time. What that will do is it'll provide just one link for your students to access. If I were to create it weekly, there will be, you know, um, a meeting every Wednesday after what is it like 16 occurrences 16 weeks in the semester and then if I hit save here I'll show you what that looks like and we'll go back to this so I'll have a meeting for each week which is the same meeting ID and it's really not necessary so let me do that over again I'm going to delete these occurrences by clicking on delete and then delete all occurrences. And then I'm going to schedule that over again, making sure I get the correct date and time, make it a recurring meeting, and then choosing no fixed time. I can have my students be put in the waiting room and then I could admit them when I'm ready to start the session. I should always require authentication to join. So that way, if the meeting link gets out onto the web, um, if it's shared, only people have uh, Stony Brook logins can get into the meeting. So you definitely want to leave this checked. I'm going to leave the host video off and the participant video off. Everyone can turn that back on when they're in the session. I can mute my students upon entry. I don't want to use the personal meeting room. I can record automatically, so that way I don't have to worry about turning on the recording or not, and then manually start the recording during the session instead of having it automatically start in the cloud. It's really up to you. I'm going to start mine because sometimes I forget to turn on my recording. Let's see what happens when I click on Enable Additional uh, Data Center Region. So it just has Europe. Eh, I'll leave it. And now here, my alternative hosts, I can add my TAs here. So that way they can start the meeting in my absence or um, they'll have extra privileges to manage like the chat or uh, admit people into the waiting room. Now, if you add your a teacher assistant, let me add an email address and then you hit enter or save rather and it says this person is not a user in the Zoom account. That could mean that they need to sign into Zoom with SSO to have their account refreshed or created. Let me put in a correct email address And then when I click Save, it took it. And that means my colleague is ready to go enter this meeting and, and work in it when we're ready. Now, what did we just create? Let's go back to the course meetings. And you can see here we have one recurring meeting. And this is the link to that recurring meeting. 
And then now what I can do when I'm back in my course is move this meeting link all the way up higher so my students can see it. Just make sure that the link isn't hidden. So I'm going to turn that link back on to show link to my students. When you click on Zoom meeting link, all of my cloud recordings will be listed here for my students to access after the session is over once it is processed.